All right. Well, good morning and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants event. My name is Joe Grabowski, and I'll be your host for today. Here we are into May. I can't believe it's May already. I'm sure a lot of the educators with us can't believe it as well, but there might be a little bit of excitement too. Uh, we have a jam-packed month coming up uh, of events. One of our big themes is biodiversity. So do visit our website, exploringbytheseat.com, where you can find all the events that we have coming up. Of course, you can register for camera spots, register to tune in live via YouTube, uh, whatever works best for your classroom. Now, I'm really excited for today's event. This is part of a two-part event, which is actually going to lead to a bigger series of events in June as we celebrate World Ocean Week. But we are going to spend a little time diving into the world of the octopus. And through that, we're going to learn more about their superpowers. We're going to learn how to draw them. And then uh, we're going to turn students loose with a contest to draw uh, some octopuses and send them in for a chance at some really exciting prizes. So joining us today, we have Warren Carlisle. He is the founder and CEO of Octonation. It's a nonprofit organization that works to inspire uh, wonder of the ocean and educating the world about octopuses. So as a professional community uh, builder, uh, strategist, he has built relationships with underwater photographers, with artists, with scientists, with aquarists, all to achieve this mission. He's created a 600,000 plus strong community where people can interact, learn, and be enamored by the ocean through the lens of the octopus. And he's going to take us into their world today. We're going to learn all about some of their incredible superpowers. So I'm going to bring Warren in live right now. Hey, Warren, how are you doing today? Hey, everyone. What's going on? All right. It's great to have you with us, Warren. We have such an awesome group of students with us. We've got kids on camera from across North America, but I'm getting a ton of greetings here in the chat. I just want to do a few here. Westminster, British Columbia, Kelowna, British Columbia, Burlington, Ontario, Fergus, Alberta, Little Rock, Arkansas, Michigan, Connecticut, Illinois. Uh, keep those <laughs> greetings coming. Toronto, it's great to have so many classrooms live with us uh, and excited to learn about uh, the octopus today. Awesome. Yes, it's my favorite animal. And hopefully by the end of this presentation, if the octopus isn't your favorite animal already, you'll consider it'll be high up on your list of favorite animals on the planet. So I'm ready to get started whenever you are, Joe. All right, I'm going to tuck myself away. It's all yours for a little bit. Let's get going. Awesome. Hello, hello, everyone. I'm so excited to talk about the octopus today. Um, and I'm going to show you a little video um, about the octopus. And uh, we're going to get started after that. <laughs> Yes, that was the octopus. And most people, what they don't know is that there's over 300 different kinds of octopuses that live in every single sea and every single coast in the whole entire world. So from the Antarctic, 
where um, you have the Antarctic octopus that has antifreeze proteins in its skin um, to just all over the world. Um, even at the very bottom of the ocean, there is an octopus called the hot water volcano octopus that lives next to 200 degree hydrothermal vents. So they exist everywhere. And depending on where they live in the ocean, they have a special superpower or adaption that lets them be the masters of their environment. So just to give you a little bit of information about me, my obsession about the octopus began when I was about seven years old and I saw an octopus for the first time. And since then, I have taught about the octopus to my friends, to my family, and then I created Octonation to teach classrooms and to go in and to teach about the octopus because they're really kind of like the Pokemon of the sea, right? Once you start learning about one of them, you want to learn about the next one, then you want to learn about the next one, and you want to figure out what that superpower is. And so the first octopus that we're going to talk about is the coconut octopus. Now raise your hand if you've ever heard about this species. Anybody? So their superpower is transforming armor. So they can assemble their coconut shells or seashells to completely hide from predators. So watch this one. This one is grabbed two coconut halves and it's just rolling itself down. And that's how it protects its body. An octopus has no bones. And so what it essentially does, it'll grab some items um, and it'll protect its squishy body from predators. You can see from here, these are uh, seashells. And if you look at this one, he, he's like, you know what? I don't have enough shells to protect my body. I'm going to go grab another one. And so he looks for one, finds it. And then he's like, yeah, this one will do. And then they just walk off, right? This is called stilt walking. And they can uh, walk across the ocean floor. And then when they want to protect themselves, they just hunker down and they pull the shells in close to them. And then they just protect themselves, right? So they use it, this kind of shells as like a shield or like an armor. And you see it's peeking its little head up. There's another species. This one's called the blanket octopus. Um, this one's really interesting. Has anybody heard of this one before? This one has an expandable cape. And only the, um, the female octopuses have this, uh, the blanket octopus has this cape. And the reason that she has it is she spends her whole entire life floating in the open ocean. She'll never touch the, uh, the ocean floor. And she'll unfold her arm webbing like a cape, making her appear super big in the ocean to scare away predators. And so this is what this one looks like. So you can see here that she unfurls this long cape and then she can eat it when she wants to swim faster to get away. She'll bring the cape up back to her body and then she'll shoot off uh, into the ocean, almost like a torpedo. Isn't that one cool? She's really pretty too. All the, it's like a rainbow color. The next one is called the sand octopus. Uh, this one's really interesting. It can't really change colors all that well. It evolved over millions and millions of years here on this planet. Um, and it evolved in a sandy environment. And so over time, it lost the ability to really change color because all it's around is sand all the time. And so this one um, shoots out a powerful jet of water into the sand and can turn regular sand into quicksand and then disappear under it. So you can see this one here. This one, instead of changing colors, because there's really no, no way around it, it just blows itself a foot underground and then it'll secrete um, this mucus, like almost like spit, and it'll pack the walls around it so that the walls don't cave in on it. And then right there, it's creating a little ventilation shaft or like a little chimney so that it can breathe while it's underground. So that's the superpower of the sand octopus. The next one is called the Harry Potter octopus. Did anybody know that there were this many octopuses? Put in the chat, say, this is the first time I've ever heard of these octopuses or say, I've heard about these before. The next one is called hairy octopus. This is one of my favorite octopus species because look down at your hand right now and look down at your fingernail. This octopus is smaller than your fingernail. It's, it's a tiny octopus that hides with the help of hair-like skin that makes it look like this drifting fuzzy plant. And so not that, any, not that many animals can see it and it blends in, it looks like a little plant. And so I have a little video of this one. 
Now, can you imagine that being this, as small as your fingernail? That's one of my favorites just because it's so tiny and cute. So the mimic octopus is, is one that many of you have most likely heard of. Um, this was actually, I don't know if you all have seen, um, with, I was finding Dory with Hank. Hank was actually based off of the mimic octopus. And this octopus uses its arms to expertly mimic the shape and the swimming style of other sea creatures. And so it can look like a lionfish. It can look like a flatfish. It can look like a banded sea snake. It can look like, and they transform into these animals so that other animals around them um, don't know what they are. And you can see right here with this one. So this one is going to start looking like a, a like a, a lionfish. It's going to start curling its arms up and looking like it's something else. Isn't that funny? <laughs> This one's trying to look like a flat, uh, like a flat fish. So it's moving its arms all around its body and then it can actually go straight down uh, because it has no bones and it can completely disappear into the hole a size of a quarter. So that's, that's a really cool octopus. One of my other favorite ones, and this one, if you've ever been to an aquarium, put in the chat um, what aquarium you've been to but if you've ever been to an aquarium, the giant Pacific octopus is typically the one that they have there. Um, and its superpower is speedy growth. So this one can grow pretty quickly. So this octopus grows from the size of a grain of rice to having an arm span of 16 feet. That's as long as a car, right? Um, so this one's superpower is just, is just speedy growth. It can grow big really quickly. Big this one is. And those suckers, you, you do see how big those suckers were on the um, the camera lens. They're about the as as big as a like a dinner plate. That's how big their suckers can get. And then the smaller ones can get the size of just like one of those, those smaller plates. I don't know if you've ever seen those, but they get pretty big, right? And so um, if you're just curious about any of the other octopus species, um, you can always ask your teacher to go to octonation.com. We have Octopedia and there's tons of other octopuses that you can look at and you can look at their different superpowers. Um, so that's for you. But what I want you to um, think about right now is what your superpower is. So just like the octopus, as you grow up as a, as a kid, you develop awesome superpowers that make you special and make you amazing in your environment. So maybe you're a fast runner. Maybe you can read books really fast. Maybe um, you have this really unique talent. Um, maybe you're really good at jumping really high. Um, start to think of what your superpower is, because just like the octopus, over the course of your life, you'll develop a really, a really cool superpower. And so later on this week, we're going to be drawing uh, an octopus. And so I just wanted to invite you um, to that lesson um, where you can draw your own octopus. You can make up your own octopus species. Um, you can name it something. You can talk about its habitat, its size, its skin color, its skin texture, and its superpower. And this is something, a class that we want to invite you to um, this next week. I'm sure me and Joe will talk about it just a little bit more. But I'm just really curious because I want to leave uh, questions for all of you. Um, what are your questions about the octopus? You know, did you learn anything new today? And, um, and if you're curious about anything, definitely let me know. <laughs> all right. Well, Warren, I'm going to come back in now. And wow, uh, those superpowers are pretty incredible. It's uh, from as big as a car to as small as your... Uh, your fingernail, they really fill mm -hmm. every niche. And that video of the camouflage that you shared at the beginning was was just amazing. Kind of looking at each one, trying to figure out where that octopus, how they were using their environment. Pretty cool. Totally. All right. Well, we're going to turn the 
uh, classes loose very soon with some questions. But before we do, I pulled together a really quick Kahoot quiz while you were sharing some of those octopus superpowers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop uh, a link up here on the screen for the students. Just bear with me for one second. Let me fix that. There we go. So you're going to head over to Kahoot.it. And when you get there with your class, you are going to have an option to put in a PIN number, which I'm going to share very shortly. So if you are one-to-one -one technology at your desk, you can join individually. If your teacher doesn't have that, you can join at the front of the room and shout out your answers. And even if you can't connect, you can still shout out your answers uh, and let us know what you thought. So I'm going to share my screen really quickly here, and cool. we are should going I, to get into it. Stop staring my screen over here. Yeah, yeah, go for it, Warren. Um, okay, so this should be up on your screen now. Let me turn the volume up on our quiz music. Uh, so there we go, kahoot.it, and then put in the pin 8160790. We'll give a few moments here for some students to come in and join us, and then we will get going uh, and see who comes out on top of uh, our octopus superpower quiz for today. Yeah, no, so, like I said, those those giant Pacific octopuses get pretty big. You can see I have this gigantic stuffed animal right here, but they get they get pretty gigantic. <laughs> Look at this one. Yeah. Very, very cool. His friend back there. A nice preview of a possible prize that students can win if they take part yes. in uh, the contest with us. Who would want to win this? Put it in the chat if you'd want to win a big octopus stuffed animal like this. I don't think anybody would not want to. <laughs> All right. So let me bring uh, that share back up. There we go. And let's get back to the Kahoot. Whoa, we've got almost 200 students in already. Let's give it another few seconds and Yay. then see if we cross 200 and then we'll take things live. So just a reminder, today will be four questions. Uh, there's uh, some multiple choice, true and false. Each question, you have 20 seconds. Uh, get the right answer, you're getting points. Get the right answer really fast, you're getting even more points. Get the wrong answer, but do it really fast. And well, we still have nothing for you. So you got to get that answer right and you got to get it really fast to get those extra points. I think we're going to pass 300 students shortly here. Warren, this is great. Let's go. Where's the room? Uh, all right. There we go. Up over 300. I want to start, but it's, there's still a lot of names coming in pretty fast. So I'm going to get another couple seconds they, here. They saw, I think they saw this octopus and all of them are just like, how do I, we just want, we just want to let you know. <laughs> We need to, they need to hear more about the contest. That's for sure. Uh, and we will, we will definitely do that. We'll, uh, after the Kahoot, we are going to jump into some Q&A action and we'll mix in some tidbits about the contest as well, including the website to head to, how you can submit. Uh, and then all this month, we wanna collect your, your pictures that you draw. And then of course, tune in on the 5th when we hang out with Chris and he's gonna teach everybody how to draw uh, an octopus and then during world ocean week we're going to announce the winner live when we we have a session about octopus and learn more uh, from a scientist named chelsea who spends her time researching uh the octopus awesome. okay we're slow, slowing down about 340 students so i'm going to take us live now here we go 20 seconds for each question first question coming up About how many kinds of octopus are there? Was it 50? Was it 150? Was it 300? Or was it 500 different species? So this is about because we're still finding out so much about our ocean. I have no doubt that there's many more species out there to discover. Uh, but this is a rough number from what Warren told us at the beginning. There's so many different types of cool octopuses out there. All right. Most students, over 200, went with 300. Good job, crew. Let's take a look and see what that did. The mighty gator is in the nice. lead. Anything can happen though. Everyone's nice and close. Social badgers right in behind. Let's go on to our next question here. This is a true and false. Octopus have bones like us. Was that true or was that false? That octopus have bones like us. Y'all are answering so fast. Good job. Yeah, you gotta fast fingers to get those bonus points. <laughs> uh, 
All right. The vast majority, over 300 students said false. Nice. Warren, I, I mean, the size of a quarter to bring their body through that, that's just incredible. Yeah. Could you imagine this, this big octopus being able to fit its whole entire body through the size of like a quarter inch hole? I mean, it's pretty spectacular. They can just move their whole entire body through it. So it's so pretty fun it to watch. I, I know that their their beak, their mouth parts are hard. So is it essentially if they can get that through, they can pretty much go yeah, through anything? Yeah, pretty much. If they can get if they can get their beak through something, that they can move their whole entire body through it. Now, do, do they always have that special circumstance where they're they're going through that small of a thing? No, but they can still fit their whole entire body under crevices and under rocks, so so they can escape from predators that can't get in um, to get them. Amazing. All right, jumping on to question number three. Oh, Mighty Gator is still holding down that top spot, but not by much. Anything can happen with this next question. So next question, the hairy octopus is the fastest octopus, the size of your fingernail, covered in hair, or none of the above? What did we learn about the hairy octopus? There we go. Now the answers are pouring in. <laughs> we just... Burst over 300 answers there. Good job, crew. About the size of your fingernail. Very cool. Yes. And so it's not actually, answers. yeah. And so it's not actually covered in hair. It's covered in um, its skin. The So the 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 hair, like its skin that essentially it, it kind of like flexes its skin and it makes it look like hair. So it can actually smooth itself out too, which is pretty fun to watch. All right. So the mighty gator might just take this tape to tape, wire to wire. They're still holding down that top spot, but the Arctic snail has hit a three answer streak. So maybe there'll be a, a sneaky comeback by the snail. So let's hit that final question and see who comes out on our podium today. Pacific giant octopus can grow to as long as a car, basketball, bench, or a house. Few more seconds to get that answer in. It's always kind of that slow start as everybody reads, and then an explosion for the last ten seconds while everyone's trying to get that answer call, in for the time. We call this we call this species a gentle giant. So they're gentle giants. <laughs> yeah, there's great video of people diving off the west coast around British Columbia and and just them kind of touching and feeling around their masks and, and uh -huh. regulators. Just so curious. I tell people they're like they're like big squishy puppy dogs. <laughs> All right. Almost 300 students rolled with the size of a car, 16 feet. That's amazing. Whoa, the social badger in third place. In second place, we have the purple bison. And in first place, the mighty gator held on. All right. Hello. Good job, crew. Thanks so much. Nice. Uh, for joining with us today and playing Kahoot. It's always fun to have a little interaction like this. I'm gonna switch gears now and come back and stop that screen share. We'll take down the Kahoot link and let's uh, let's get into some Q&A action. What do you think, Warren? Awesome, I can't wait. All right, we have tons uh, of questions coming in via the chat. I see a few more classes saying hi from Hutchinson, Kansas and from across Ontario, Florida, Toronto, uh, New England. I was born in Florida. Very cool. Chicago. We've got a great crew hanging out all over the place with us today. That's awesome. So we'll start bringing in some camera classrooms. We'll start grabbing some questions from the YouTube chat. In fact, here's a nice easy one that just popped up in the YouTube chat. Uh, wanting to know about brains. Do octopus have more than one brain? Yeah, so it's really, really interesting. So um, I'll actually show you on an octopus. So on an octopus, their brain is located just in between their eyes and it actually um, wraps around their esophagus inside, right? So they have a donut shaped brain that wraps around um, their esophagus. So they have to be very careful that they chew their food all of the way because it passes. Could you imagine your food passing through your brain? <laughs> well, an octopus can. Right. And so another thing is throughout their arms, they have all these clusters of, of nerve uh, called ganglia. And so we call those satellite brains. And so they have their central brain in their head and then in their body, they have two thirds of their neurons there. So their arms can actually make decisions without the use of their central brain. So if, if their arms or whatever are hunting for food, 
their um, central brand can be looking out for predators. So they don't actually have to, you know, they can multitask essentially. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's wild. I know we get brain free sometimes if we drink something too cold, too fast. I wonder what it's called. If you they swallow something too big and it <laughs> pushes on their brain. I don't know. That's uh, pretty wild. All right. Let's start meeting some camera classrooms. Let's start off. Let's go to New York. We've got some fifth graders hanging out with Miss Collins. Let's bring them nice. front and center. There they are. Hey, New York. How are you? All right. <laughs> All right. Um, what was the fastest octopus you ever seen? Um, let's see. The fastest. Um, the fastest are typically um, the common octopus. I don't know if anybody in the class has seen My Octopus Teacher. Have you ever seen My Octopus Teacher on Netflix? So that species, you can raise your hand if you've ever seen that movie. Um, but in that movie, there's a species called the common octopus. And because they're a little bit medium sized, they use jet propulsion, which means they bring in air or they bring in um, water um, into their mantle cavity, right? And they kind of blow that mantle cavity up and then they exhale it out of their siphon. And so they use that siphon for jet propulsion and it blasts them um, really, really fast away. And so that's one of the ways where if an octopus is being chased or anything like that, it'll use jet propulsion, it'll blast itself, and then it'll try to crawl under crevices so that the, the, um, thing that wants to eat it can't get it. And so they're super, super fast. All right. Great, great, question. Great, great question to get us rolling. This time we're going to jump. We were just, uh, in New York. Let's go somewhere a little further away. Let's go to Austin, Texas. We've got some first graders hanging out with Miss Conlon. Let's bring them front and center. Hey, there Austin, Texas. That's where there I'm at right now. Hello, Austin. Very hey. cool. What's hey, going Austin. On? <laughs> okay. Awesome. awesome. How, how much babies can an octopus have in one day? That's a really, really good That's question. That's a really, really good question. So an octopus, um, what they do is they essentially have eggs, um, octopus eggs, and they actually braid them together and they attach them to the roof of their den, right? And so they can braid close to 100,000 of those tiny, tiny eggs. Um, and, uh, and it's pretty amazing. And then the whole entire time she's braiding those eggs and attaching them to the roof of her den, she'll stay there with those eggs and she'll make sure that it's it's getting oxygen. She'll make sure that no critters try to get on those eggs and she'll just protect those eggs the whole entire time until they hatch. So over 100,000. All right. Amazing. Uh, if you have the chance today uh, to look up something on YouTube, you can look up something called the Octopus Garden. And this was, uh, I was on a ship called the Nautilus and we were using ROVs to look three kilometers underwater, underwater robots. And we found thousands of purple octopuses turned upside down, brooding, protecting their eggs. It was really, really cool. So check it's out amazing. the Octopus Garden uh, if you have some time today. Uh, okay, we're going to go to Miss Steinhoff's crew in Guelph, uh, Ontario, and then we'll take a little trip to YouTube, and then we'll start grabbing camera classes again. Hey, nice. Guelph. Um, how many suction cups does an octopus have? Another really, really great question. So an octopus, um, the giant Pacific octopus, um, has about 2,240 suckers, right? Um, and that's uh, that's a lot, right? And what's really interesting about the suckers is that they can actually taste um, whatever they touch and they can smell whatever they touch. So could you imagine being able to walk on the ground and taste with your feet? <laughs> so the octopus can essentially, before it goes to eat something, it can feel it and it can know whether or not it's a food item or not. And so that's why if an octopus typically, you know, if you interact with an octopus and it touches you, it goes, this isn't food or this is way too big. Uh, and so an octopus has really no desire to uh, to bite into us at all. <laughs> all right. Oh, that's I mean, that's an awesome superpower. But I can imagine some places as a human, we, we don't want to taste where we were walking. Wouldn't it be yeah, uh, no. wouldn't it be a great experience. 
All right. Well, let's zip over to YouTube and grab a few questions from here. And I had a feeling this would come up. This multiple classrooms are asking about ink. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's going on there? Yeah. So Octopus Ink is really interesting. Um, so Octopus Ink, they use it as a self-defense mechanism. And so what happens is an octopus, they have the siphon um, that's on the side of their head right here, right? So that we already said that the siphon, it blows water out of it and it jets them really far away. But another thing that the siphon do is, is it disperses ink. So imagine an octopus jetting away very quickly, but also dispersing an ink cloud. The, the ink has um, stuff in it that essentially will um, make it to where the person or the, the predator that's trying to attack the octopus, it'll dull their senses. So they really won't be able to smell. I don't know if you've ever gotten a cold or anything like that and you lost your ability to smell or taste. Well, when the octopus blows its ink out at like a fish or an eel or something that's trying to eat it, all of a sudden, the, the thing that's attacking it, it can't smell and it can't taste and it kind of gets disoriented. Um, and so it's a really great superpower that the octopus has just in case um, it's being chased after. All right. Very all right. cool. I want to take an informal survey here. Uh, I'm going to pop all the classrooms on camera just for a moment. And I want to put hands up if you thought octopus were cool before today. Before today, hands up if you thought they were cool. Okay. Now, hands up if you think they're even cooler now that you've learned so much about them. All right. That's what I like to see. There are eight, eight, eight arms up. There we go. Very okay. cool. All right. We're going to grab some more questions here. Uh, one more from YouTube, and then we'll switch back. So uh, this question is, of, well, this is directed more towards you, Warren. A favorite species. Do you have a favorite? Can you choose? Oh, you're still on mute, Warren. This is a hard question because it's it's like asking who, what your favorite kid is. So for me, I would say that at the end of the day, um, I love the giant Pacific octopus. Um, it's one that I've interacted with um, personally at aquariums. Like I've pet um, a giant Pacific octopus. Um, they're super friendly um, and they know um, how to recognize your face. And so another superpower of the octopus is they can actually recognize individual human faces. Um, so they did a study um, and an octopus was able to discern even when the employees were wearing the same uniform, an octopus could tell who was the keeper that fed um, so she, you know, the octopus would come up really quickly when she was there because she knew that that was the keeper that fed her. And so they can recognize if you visit an octopus at an aquarium um, time and time again, it's possible that it'll remember who you are. Wow. Really cool. Uh, where should we go next? Mrs. Fisher's crew are joining us from Michigan. How are we doing, Michigan? All right. Go ahead. This is Ada. Um. What does a vampire octopus look like? She Ooh, means a that's a good that's squares. that's a good um good question. I wonder if I could find a photo um a little bit later and pull it up here on the screen. Um, but it's a really really cool species that lives close to the bottom of the ocean. And what's really cool about the vampire um vampire squid and it's uh it looks kind of like an octopus too is that at the end of its arms, it has this webbing. Um, I wonder if I have a, um, I'll have to pull up a picture, but at the end of its arms, it has these filaments and they're bioluminescent, which means they glow in the dark. Um, and it's just a really cool species. Another really cool superpower of the vampire um, octopus or squid is that it can turn its whole body inside out and it looks like a pineapple almost. It's called pineapple posture. And it, that's the way it kind of protects its body. And so that's that's an octopus fan right there that knows about the vampire. So good on you. <laughs> All I'll right. Have to find a photo for to look at. Really cool. Before we jump into some more questions, I do want to share a little bit about the contest because sometimes near the end, classrooms have to start ducking out. So I want to make sure we have a nice captive audience. We talk a little bit about the contest. So if you head to exploringbytheseat.com backslash octopus, 
you can find the page we have set up for the event. So there'll be a recording of this event we did with Warren. If you guys want to check it out again or look back at any of those cool adaptations, those cool superpowers, you can see the spot to register for Chris's event coming up on the 5th at 12 o'clock Eastern. So the same time as today, where we're going to get a chance to get some technique and learn how to draw an octopus. And then the details for the contest are here. So we're keeping it nice and easy. Uh, we want you to draw an octopus using one of its superpowers, using one of its adaptations. So it could be one that Warren talked about. You might decide to research uh, and choose a different one, or we're going to have a fun little category as well where you can pick a new superpower for an octopus, something that helps it survive in its environment. So it can't just be like laser eyes for the sake of laser eyes. It has to be something that's going to help the octopus survive in its underwater ecosystem. So there's a little extra work. You have to tell us how this superpower helps the octopus survive. So do visit there. Their email is there as well for submitting your entries. So uh, as a teacher, you could take pictures of the entries. You could scan the entries and send them in. But it's really important you make sure that we get the names uh, of the students, where your class is and located. So we know where uh, the photos are coming or the pictures are coming in from. And then they're going to be due at the end of the month because we're going to make the official announcement on June 7th during World Ocean Week when we have another exciting octopus event uh, with Dr. Chelsea joining us. So you can find all the details there. Pop any questions in the chat you have today. I can try to answer some through text. Um, and then, of course, join us on the 5th because we have another really exciting event uh, to get your classes primed and ready for the contest. And uh, yeah, we've teamed up with the Explorers Club. We've teamed up with Warren at Octonation, and we're going to have some really cool prizes. I shared some pictures, and we'll officially uh, put the prize list up uh, at the end of the week. So we hope that everybody who joined us today takes part in that awesome uh, drawing contest. All right, Warren, let's dive back into a few more camera classes. We've got Mrs. McTiernan's group hanging out with us. There they are. How are we doing today? They are in Canada, in Ontario. Hey, um, Hayden has a question. How do you tell the difference between a girl octopus and a boy octopus? Nice. So the difference between them is, so what you'll have to do is uh, when you're looking at the front of the octopus like this, you know how we have a left hand and a right hand? Well, an octopus has a left forearms and a right forearms, right? And so you have to start counting. And so the um, third arm from the right, and so if you're looking at like this um, and you go one, two, three, the, at the end of the male or the boy octopus, um, you'll see at the very uh, end of his arm, there'll be no suckers whatsoever. It'll just be kind of like a spoon like thing there. And that's how you can tell if it's a boy if it's a girl, then she'll have suckers throughout the whole entire length of this arm. And so you want to make sure um, it's kind of hard to tell unless you like kind of, you know, pick it up and look at it. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, if you count the third right arm, you pick it up. And if there's no suckers at the very end, it's a boy. All right. <laughs> very cool. Great question. Uh, we need to go to fourth graders hanging out with us. I think they're in Oregon, but they will definitely correct me if I am wrong. Let's bring them in. Okay. Hey, uh, we're Tell we're in Ohio. We're in Ohio. Ohio. It's you tricked me with your email. Okay, go for it. It's the, city, the city is Oregon. Gotcha. And my question is, do octopus eat other octopi? Octopuses. Octopuses. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, there are some species. So octopuses aren't really, um, they're kind of loners from the standpoint of like, they're, they're really, um, it's kind of uh, every octopus for itself from the standpoint of they don't really um, hang out with one another. They kind of, um, as soon as they hatch, they kind of go off and they do their own thing. It's kind of just like hands off, don't bother me. Um, so if another octopus um, goes into the territory of another octopus, um, it'll actually be like, hey, it'll like, you know, be aggressive with it. It'll say, don't, don't like get away from my, my little den. Right. Um, but if it gets to the point where that octopus is being too aggressive, then they have been known um, to eat each other. Um, and 
when you look at the octopus, it has no bones. So they're kind of like squishy protein bars for a lot of ocean animals. And so other octopuses, if they, for whatever reason, can't find, you know, food around them, they might go and they might eat another octopus. So they do, they are cannibalistic. Yes. All right. Great questions coming in today. They're, they're nonstop, which is great. There's definitely a lot of curiosity about the octopuses. That's awesome. Um, okay, let's grab, let's mix it up. We'll grab a few more camera ones, a few more YouTube ones before we wrap up for today. So uh, another one off YouTube here, Miss Scott's crew would like to know, do you know anybody who's ever discovered a new species of octopus? Yeah, so actually um, one of our lead scientists, um, she discovered it wasn't necessarily a new octopus, but octopuses are constantly migrating all over the world, right? Like I, I mentioned, they live in every single ocean. They're along every coastline on the whole entire planet. And so she was doing her research and she found that there was a species that was in Brazil that happened to find itself all the way over into Florida. Um, it was a species of, a, of Atlantic long arm um, octopus and it found its way into um, Florida. And so, but there are probably um, a lot of species that we have yet to discover. And so if anybody wants to grow up and start studying um, octopuses, I'm sure you can be the one to discover a brand new species that nobody has ever seen before. All right, a very cool challenge to issue for our future marine biologists. Uh, let's pop in a few camera questions. Ms. Steinhoff's crew. Have eight ah, that's a really, really, really good question. So octopuses have eight arms, right? Um, the difference between an octopus arm and an octopus tent, or sorry, an octopus arm and a squid's tentacle is um, a tentacle has no suckers. I wish I had a squid toy here. Um, but octopuses have suckers throughout their whole entire arm, right? So you can see right here, they have suckers throughout their whole entire arm. Uh, a tentacle essentially has suck um, has no suckers throughout the whole entire arm, and that the, at the very end there's like this lily pad, right? And it has all of these suckers on it. And um, squids have those to go out, and they 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 blast them out from um, from behind their eyes. They have sockets behind their eyes that actually have the tentacles in them. They blast them out. They grab their food, and then they bring it into their beak, right? And so that's what um, that's what squids do. But octopus arms, um, they have suckers throughout the whole entire length of their arm. So that's the difference between a, an octopus arm and a squid tentacle is that the uh, tentacle doesn't have any suckers until the very end where there's like a lily pad that has all of these suckers on it. And then that's what they use to grab their food and bring it into their beak. All right. All right. Very cool. And you can see right here, if anyone's curious where the octopus's beak is, um, it's right where all of their arms um, get together. So you can see an octopus has a beak right here, just kind of like a parrot. Uh, and so what they do is they'll they'll you know grab their food and then their suckle suckers will bring it closer into their mouth like a conveyor belt. So it's pretty interesting. All right, back to New York. Go ahead, Miss Collins crew. Are there any uh, air? Is there any air in an octopus's body? So there are certain species of octopuses um, that live off of the coast of California and off of the coast of Australia that actually can crawl on land um, and they can hunt in between tide pools. Uh, so when the tide goes out, there's all these pockets of water and sometimes fish get trapped in it because they can't walk on land. So fish get stuck in these little tide pools. Well, the octopus can crawl out of the ocean. It can walk on the land and it can go in those tide pools and it can capture the fish and eat the fish or the crab. So the octopus, essentially, it can breathe um, through its skin. I don't know if you've ever heard of frogs being able to breathe through their skin or anything like that, but an octopus um, can breathe a little, a little bit of oxygen through its skin on land, but it's only certain species that have evolved to do that that, are, that live by the coast. And so, yeah, that's a really great question. All right, Miss Fisher's crew, do you have a, a wrap up question? Yep, lots of questions. <laughs> we do, we've got Cameron here. Cameron, go ahead. What's the strongest type of squid? What, what's the strongest type of octopus? 
Ooh, that's a good question. So the strongest type of octopus um, that I believe is typically the ones that have the biggest um, suckers um, are the strongest, right? Um, you'd be surprised at how strong um, those, those suckers really are. Um, they can hold on to pretty large animals. Um, there's um, a giant Pacific octopus um, that grab, grabbed a hold of a hound shark and grabbed a hold of its tail and brought it in. Um, and so they're pretty strong um, when they want to be. So I would say that the giant Pacific octopus is the strongest because it has some of the biggest suckers that allow it to be stronger. All right. Very cool. We're going to squeeze in one or two more here. Miss McTiernan's group, do you have a follow up? Hello, hello, everybody. There they are. I think someone's coming. Yep. Go play. Do you know all the different all the different types of octopus? I think. <laughs> yeah. So for me, um, I've I've been studying the octopus um, uh, by myself ever since I was seven, and now I have a lot of scientist friends and underwater photographers and videographers all over the world. So it's really cool. I get to make friends with people on like Instagram or TikTok or um, Twitter or Facebook all over the world that take videos of the octopus. And so I've been sent thousands and thousands of videos uh, for the longest time. And people have asked me, hey, do you know what species this is? And I don't know every single one of them. And if I don't know, I reach out to a scientist friend and I say, hey, I've never seen this one before. And so over years, um, I've learned um, how to look at different types of octopuses, like uh, the blue ringed octopus that has the, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of one of those, but they have these blue bioluminescent rings on them. Um, and so there's certain things when you look at an octopus, you can go, ooh, that one has blue rings. It's the blue ringed octopus. Or ooh, that's a big giant octopus. That's gotta be the giant Pacific octopus. And so if you choose to follow Octonation and look at our Octopedia online and make maybe flashcards, um, you can go to our website, you can make flashcards with the octopus species, you can very easily um, start knowing. It's kind of like if anybody knows about like a Chihuahua versus a Great Dane versus a Labrador, you can start learning um, the different octopus species and learning their superpowers. And so that's what I've done. And I hope after today um, that everybody wants to learn about all the different types of octopuses and their superpowers. All right. Oh, for a minute, I thought you were going to be challenged to name all 300. <laughs> name all 300. Time to finish that in the event. Very cool. Well, I want to start off with a huge shout out to all of our classrooms today, whether you were with us on YouTube, whether you joined us in a camera spot, such great questions. And of course, thank you so much for hanging out with us and playing the Kahoot. Uh, I do want to share here. Uh, we've shared it a few times, but again, there's the site Octonation. So do head over, uh, check it out. I think you could spend a lot of time getting lost on the website and, and learning about all the different species and superpowers and such. So a great research point for the contest coming up. So visit exploringbytheseat.com backslash octopus where you can find all the details and please join us on the 5th join us at 12 p.m eastern to learn how to draw an octopus and warren thank you so much for spending some time with us taking us into the world uh, of the octopus and introducing us to those amazing superpowers those amazing adaptations absolutely and if any of you want to there's an activity book that we have on our website if you just go to octonation.com and click octonation kids we have a free uh, downloadable book um, where you can download it, you can print it out, and you can give it to your students in class. It's really, really fun. There's crosswords. There's you know um, some fun connect the dots. I think you'll really enjoy it. All right. Well, a few of our classrooms had to duck out at the end of their period, but we still have a few more here on the screen with us. So give us a big wave, uh, classrooms. It was so great to see you today. There they are. Bye. 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 Have a great rest of the week, everybody. We hope to see you on the 5th, right here, same time. And then I'm awesome. looking forward to, I know Warren and myself, we're looking forward to all of your drawings. Thanks so much, everyone. And we are going to sign off for today.